Okay, so let's see if your algebra skills are strong enough to solve this problem. So here is the question. We're trying to locate the points of intersection between this line and this circle. So we're looking for two points here. We'll call this point point B and this point right here point A. Okay, so this right here is the equation of this line, this linear equation. So we have y is equal to 1 half x plus 1. And then right here we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 8. This is the equation of this circle. All right, so once again, we're trying to locate the points of intersection uh, between the circle and the line. Now, if you think you can solve this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section and feel free to use a calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at where the circle and the line intersect. Again, we're looking for points B and A. Okay, so point A is at the coordinate 2, 2, and point B, of uh, the intersection between that circle and line, is at negative 14 over 5, comma, negative 2 fifths. So those are the two points. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that's pretty impressive. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, and I'm going to actually give you more than 100%. I'm going to give you like 120%. Back in my days in the 1970s and 80s, the most you could get was typically 100%, and your GPA, if you were like perfect, was 4.0. But nowadays, you can get like 180%. You can get GPAs of like 9.2. It's pretty crazy. But anyways, listen, I'm going to give you that A+, plus, 100%, and multiple stars to celebrate your awesomeness. Now, if you were... Like looking at this problem, and you're like, ah, I think I was doing it right. Uh, you know, what do I need to do? Well, let's go ahead and get to get into this right now because even though you may not have gotten the correct solution, you very well could have been on the right path. So that's why I encourage all of you to attempt these problems. Write things down because uh, again, you very well could have been on the right path, but maybe you you ran into a stumbling block. But let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here. And really, what we're uh, dealing with is what we call a system of nonlinear equations. Let me back up here real quick, and let's just erase all of this so I could just show you here real quick. Now, this is a topic that I'm going to be talking about here is something that all of you should have learned back in Algebra 1 or pre-algebra. So let's just uh, draw a little xy coordinate plane here. So here's x and here's y. So here, let's say we have a system y equals 2x plus 1. And let's say 2x minus y is equal to 7. Now, I'm not going to think about this too much and actually give you the um, uh, exact graphs to both of these. But this is a line and this is another line. Okay, so let's suppose I graph one line here and I graph another line right here. That's a terrible line. I could do better than that. Uh, let's use a different color, by the way. Let's uh, uh, hold on one second. I'm trying to get it together. All right. Yeah, let's see. There you go. I'm going to use blue. All right. So here is another line. So this would be, let's say, line two. This would be line two. And this would be line one, line one. Okay, so again, we're talking about stuff that you learn as uh, even in pre-algebra, you got introduced to basic systems. All right. So the topic we're dealing with here is systems. All right. But we're dealing with what we call two variable linear systems. Okay. Two variable linear systems. And effectively what we're doing is uh, conceptually is that these systems represent lines. These are linear systems. So it's one line, another line. And if these two lines happen to cross this point of intersection, this X, Y point here would be the solution to the, uh, to the system. Okay. Now, of course the lines don't have to cross and the lines can be parallel where there is no solution. But anyways, hopefully you get the general idea. But what we're talking about here again is linear systems, i.e. systems that involve a line. But what about systems that involve a circle and a line? Okay, so instead of uh, two lines, right, let's just kind of uh, fix up our little system here. Okay, what if we had a circle and a line? Okay, well, that's our situation here. So we have a circle and then we have a line. So again, the points of intersection, if these um, two objects uh, do in fact 
uh, intersect because here's the thing. I could have a circle like this and I can have my line over here where I have no points of intersection. So they may, they may not be a solution to this system. But really the topic, what I'm kind of getting at here is uh, systems of nonlinear, nonlinear equations. Now, even though we have a line, we do have a circle. Okay, so what if I had a circle and I had like an exponential function, right? Let's say I kind of fix this thing up, something like this, right? Again, nonlinear, you're still looking for points of intersection. So uh, the, uh, the skills that you learn to solve linear systems like the substitution method and uh, linear combination method and graphing method, those type of basic techniques you can actually use to solve this problem. So anyways, uh, hopefully uh, this kind of will set up, uh, you, know, can, you know, how to solve this, these type of problems. It's not just, you know, in math, it's like, here, I'm going to show you how to solve this one problem. But if you don't understand the big picture, well, then you're not going to be able to apply this in a more general sense. Okay. All right. So here is our uh, equation uh, for the circle. Now, I'm not going to even get, in, get into... Uh, the equations of conic sections and circles. Just I'm just telling you this is the equation that represents this circle. And then here we have the equation that uh, is, of course, this linear equation right there. All right, so we're looking for these two points of intersection. What can we do? Well, here's the thing. You want to be thinking about those skills that you learned in Algebra 1 or pre-algebra. And I'm going to give you a hint. Try to use the substitution method, okay? Here I have uh, two variables, x and y, and I have x and y over here. And this y is already set up for me. I have y is equal to this. So how about we substitute this y for all of this stuff right there, okay? That is the uh, uh, kind of the path you want to take. Now, if you didn't see that, uh, if you're like, oh, I was confused about how to solve this problem, you're like, oh, this makes sense. You should probably just pause this video and work out the rest of this problem. See if you can handle the algebra that goes along with this. But what are we looking for? Okay. Well, we're looking for as our solution. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. Now, the problem that we're doing here is like an Algebra 2 or pre-calculus level problem. So if you need additional help at this level of mathematics, well, check out my Algebra 2 or my pre-calculus courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the problem. We're looking for an X and a Y, okay? And we're looking for one X and one Y that represents this point. And we're looking for another X and another Y that represents this point. Now, are these X and Y values going to be the same? No, it's impossible for them to be the same because this location is not this location, right? So we're looking for two different X values and two different Y values. So hopefully now you kind of see the big picture. Now let's get into the algebra. All right, so again, what we want to do is use the substitution method we're going to uh, replace that y, okay, uh, because we know y is equal to all of this. We're going to replace this y with this. And anytime you're using the substitution method, you want to use parentheses. So let's go and focus our attention over to the left-hand side here and plug in uh, this right here, 1 half x plus 1. We're going to replace this y with 1 half x plus 1. So here is our... Uh, equation for our circle. Now, I am kind of wrote a little bit smaller here so we can kind of see what's going on, but uh, hopefully you can kind of follow what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm going to replace that y with 1 half x plus 1, and we're going to square it because this is y squared. But now I have one equation with one variable. That's what the substitution allows us. It's all in x. This, uh, I'm sorry, this equation here is all in that one variable x. So I have x squared plus all of this. And now this really comes down to your ability uh, to, you know, uh, your algebra skills and your ability to do things in algebra like multiply and square and solve quadratic equations, etc. All right, so here we go. x squared, 1 half x plus 1 squared. I multiply this by itself. I can use the FOIL technique. You should get this. If you don't know how to do any of these sub skills, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to uh, thoroughly review um, a lot of different things in like the algebra one level. 
So uh, I would probably direct you towards my Algebra 1 uh, course. Okay, so check that out. That would help you tremendously. I do have additional videos on all these little topics as well. All right, so let's continue to work this uh, problem out. So here I have x squared plus 1 fourth x squared plus x plus 1. So I can add at, uh, 1 x squared plus uh, 1 fourth x squared. And of course, all of you are experts at fractions. This is the same thing as 4 over 4. So all the x squared and x squared are um, 4 over 4 or 1 x squared plus 1 fourth x squared gives me 5 fourths x squared plus x uh, minus 7. Now what I did here is I subtracted 8 from both sides of the equation and I'm writing this thing or I want to write this thing in standard form. Okay, and this is pretty much highest to lowest power and you set this thing equal to 0 because well, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with a quadratic equation. All right, so let's go ahead and clear away this fraction, uh, this leading uh, coefficient here and that's just a fancy term for the coefficient or the number in front of the x squared. So let's get rid of that. I can always get rid of all the fractions by multiplying by the LCD. LCD here is 4. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 4. Now, if you didn't want to do this, that's perfectly fine. You could solve this quadratic equation using its coefficient. But, you know, that would be like more work than is necessary. Always clear fractions if you can. So when I multiply 4 by 5 fourths, you're going to get 5x squared. 4 times x gives me 4x. 4 times this negative 7 gives me negative 28. And 4 times 0 is 0. Okay, so here is our uh, quadratic equation. We still don't have the solutions for this, but what do we know? When I solve for x, quadratic equations always have two solutions. Okay, so I'm going to have well, one solution for x and another solution for x, two solutions. And remember, keep the big picture in mind. We're looking for two x values, right? We're looking for one x here and one x here. And, and because we're solving this quadratic equation, we're going to get two unique x values. That's going to represent these uh, uh, coordinates for these respective points. So this is making sense. Well, at least hopefully it's making sense. But let's go ahead and continue on. All right, so let's go ahead and solve 5x squared plus 4x minus 28. And we'll pick up the problem right here. Okay, so anytime you are solving any quadratic equation and you have a trinomial, always try to factor. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, so this is factorable. Now, how uh, this is uh, factored into this, that is a skill. Okay, you have to be excellent at factoring. If you don't know how I went from here to here, you need to review factoring. All right, I would say pr probably one of the most important skills in al pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, all of algebra is your ability to factor. Okay, so anyways, you want to be able to factor, and we can factor. So we have uh, this um, trinomial equal to x minus 2 times 5x plus 14 is equal to 0. So now we can set each of these factors equal to 0. Okay, this is what we call the zero product property. And when I solve these respective equations, you get x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 14 over 5. Okay, so what does that mean, though? Well, uh, we just found the x coordinates for these respective points. We got point A and point B. And uh, point A, uh, its x uh, coordinate is going to be 2. Okay. And point B, its x coordinate, its x, uh, coordinate is going to be negative 14 over 5. Now, how do we know that? Well, I'm calling, how do we know which one's A, which one's B? Well, just look here. We know that point A is in the first quadrant. Okay, so it's like 1, 2 over here. So this point, just visually speaking, uh, its x value is going to be negative, right? So this is negative and it's going to be negative. So we're going to have uh, this in the third quadrant and this point will be in the first quadrant, right? This is going to be negative and negative in terms of our x and y and our point A here should be positive and positive. Okay, so we have our x's. Let's go get our y values now. So we'll pick up the problem right here. So how do we get y when we have solved for x? Well, we have two equations that involve both x and y. So I can either use this equation or this equation. Which one's easier to use? Well, obviously, this is the easier equation to work with. 
These guys, we are solving for y, and this is super easy. If we're solving for y, we have x. We just simply just plug in our x values here, do this number crunching, and we will get y. And let's go ahead and do that right now for these respective points. Okay, but look here. We have to do it twice because we got to plug in x when x is 2 for uh, and to get a um, the y value for that point. And then once we're done doing that, we got to plug in this x value into the same equation to get y for the other point. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. And you can see I already did the work here. When x is 2, uh, y will be 2. You can see the work. So that point is 2, 2. And when x is negative 14 over 5, y is equal to negative 2 fifths. Of course, you can see all the work there just to kind of double check this stuff. And that is that second uh, coordinate. Okay, so this is how you get these two points. And this would be the solution to this nonlinear system. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in advanced math, check out these courses right here. So these courses, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, these are effectively the same level of mathematics. So whether you take my Algebra 2 or College Algebra uh, course, you're going to get the same material. Now, if you are further along in math and you need to study like advanced trigonometry and other topics, then check out my pre-calculus course. All right, so I'm going to leave uh, links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.